Hello, Rick here, and this final episode of the Cardassian Struggle arc has us looking at the lore behind the Bajoran religion, the Prophets, and the Celestial Temple. A wormhole, if you ask your standard Starfleet officer, is the physical and visible manifestation of a fold in space-time where two points are bridged. To your standard Bajoran, however, it is the manifestation of divine power and well, neither line of thought has to be exclusive, especially in the case of the Prophets. The Bajoran wormhole was technically discovered in 2369 by Lieutenant Jadzia Dax and Commander Benjamin Sisko of Starfleet. The wormhole in the Alpha Quadrant begins in the Denorius belt of the Bajor star system and terminated in the Gamma Quadrant 4.7 light years from the Idrin system, creating a shortcut across 70,000 light years of space. I say technically, as there are stories and myths from Bajor concerning the Celestial Temple, home to the gods of Bajor, the Prophets, and these stories date back tens of thousands of years. Wormholes themselves can be found as natural and artificial phenomena across the quadrants, though many are too small for a ship to pass through, too unstable, or have intense time distortion properties making them generally little more than curious anomalies, though of tantalising potential. Unusually, the Bajoran wormhole marks one of the only stable wormholes ever discovered, and this is attributed to the high level of verterons. These subatomic particles are still being researched by Starfleet, but high levels of them seem to create a form of drag against objects similar to gravity. For example, a stream of verterons could be used to alter the flight path of a comet or snare anomalies such as wormholes holding them in place. They can also cause interference in current sensor technology and seem to prevent the formation of a stable warp field, suggesting that they have an impact on subspace. Not an unbelievable claim, considering their involvement in wormholes. However, a ship can safely traverse through clusters of verterons called nodes with little ill effect. The Bajoran religion says that the Celestial Temple is stable as it is the home of the Prophets and by their will it exists. These mythological deities were confirmed as existing creatures and have long had ties with Bajor, even claiming to be of Bajor. These entities were extra-dimensional and lacked understanding of the physical form as well as linear perceptions of time only learning about it through their encounters with other species. Within the wormhole, they possess the ability to shape things as they saw fit, being easily able to displace objects through time, as they did with the Dominion fleet. Though there are a few encounters with the wormhole in Bajor's history, these are often recounted with a nautical pioneer's flair and sound like legends such as in 2133, when Kai Taluno's ship was drifting in space for a time and came close to the entrance of the wormhole. He reported that space just opened up and he was almost swallowed by the heavens. I imagine that this must have seemed rather terrifying, despite his position as Bajor's spiritual leader, and I doubt he had any notion of how close he'd come to literally encountering his gods. Ah, so... As a Kai, he was the ultimate authority in spiritual matters of Bajor, and it was the Kai's job to steer the Bajoran people towards a healthy spiritual life. They technically had no political power, but their recommendations and influence was great enough to rival that of the government. Disagreements between the two powers could easily split the Bajoran people. Kais were selected from the Assembly of Vedics, effectively monks who devoted their lives to understanding the teachings of their doctrine, writing canonical papers and guiding the people. Below the Vedics were the Prylars and the Ranjans, divided up into different orders. What began the whole affair with the Prophets can be traced back to at least 7500 BCE, by an Earth calendar. This is when records first mention the discovery of at least nine tiers of the Prophets, or orbs as later known. These orbs are crystalline-like lattices that emit a green, blue and white hue of light as well as chiming noises that seem to be suspended in the air. They were supposedly discovered caught in Bajor's orbit and brought to the planet as documented in a book called When the Prophets Cried by Vedic Sinta Kainil. The orbs were then placed in arcs and pilgrims allowed to view the artefacts. 
the purpose of an orb is unknown by Starfleet analysis as they seem to defy and contradict many scanning techniques, making a full understanding near impossible. The Bajoran faith, however, steps in to provide its own context. Bajoran belief states that the orbs were sent by the prophets to guide the devout and provide a direct link to the celestial temple. This was not idle speculation on their part, as staring into an orb can result in what was termed an orb experience. The individual, remaining physically still, is seemingly entranced by the shimmering facets of the hourglass formation and mentally transported into a vision of the past or future. Huh, glowing crystals that provide time displaced visions. Why have I seen that recently? The viewer may also, in very rare circumstance, be placed in direct contact with the prophets themselves, who always speak in riddles about the viewer's life or potential course. It then falls to the individual to find meaning in the visions, often aided by the Vedics. The motivation of the prophets to help the devout individuals seems to be ascribed, however, as there are speculations that Bajor was not the only recipient of these space-time displacing crystals created by higher dimensional beings. Being jettisoned from the wormhole, many could have simply been caught in the first gravitational body they encountered, Bajor. And who's to say that the Alpha Quadrant end of the wormhole was the only opening they were dispatched from? Fortunately, the Bajoran people themselves are relatively peaceful, placing a high emphasis on maintaining their planet's ecosystem and balance, and practicing pacifism. I would say these traits are inherent to their society and not the result of a deity's desires. The visions created by these orbs were used as the foundation of many of Bajor's prophecies on future events, and there are many recorded within the 10,000 plus years of history. Some included Horan's seventh prophecy, he will come to the palace bearing no malice, carrying a chalice filled with sweet spring wine. In his hands will be seven branches and his brow seven stars, he will be wrapped in cloth of many colours and spread joy wherever he goes. It goes on to state the signs of this prophetic individual's coming and the bounty he will bring to Bajor if heeded. Many of these prophecies adopt similar warnings and heralds but are unclear in their meaning likely often from the indirect nature of the orb's visions and the twisted perspective of time that the prophets have. There are also philosophical teachings from individuals like Renun which states that the key to being at peace with oneself is to understand that you will act against the prophet's teachings in your life, and that adhering to scripture too rigidly can be a detriment. It also says that the prophets only seek to guide us and are not there to micromanage your life. There are also a myriad of rituals and festivals observed, such as the Gratitude Festival, which was an annual celebration originally known as Peldor, and celebrated for over 20,000 years. This places it before records of the orbs, so perhaps it was a custom adopted into the prophetic faith. A ritual of this day of celebration had the presider light a fire to receive the renewal scrolls. These scrolls contained people's burdens, which were then burned in a symbolic gesture. Gifts are often exchanged among the people, and incense of Batarat leaves is the traditional scent of the festival. Bajorans believe that they have a spirit, called a Pa, which upon death returns to the celestial temple to live alongside the prophets. This life force can be sensed through the grasping of an earlobe, hence the addition of the Bajoran earpiece that acts as a piece of symbolism for devotees. Other customs involve fasting to show devotion, as penned in the tome Cooking for Fasts by Renaj Nagal in 2047, though it was stressed that a fast should be broken if the body begins to suffer too much, as the body and pa are linked in health. This could suggest a more chakra or chi-like interpretation of the spirit, where the soul and body are as one and produced a life essence. With the existence of souls, there are usually stories of ghosts and demons. Bajor is no different, with the addition of the Borya, disembodied spirits tied to the mortal plane and the demonic par wraiths. The exorcism of Boyas recorded the exploits of a Vedic as he attempted to exorcise spirits from a farmer called Boyas, who had clawed out his eyes under its influence. They believed they were fighting a par wraith, and the author of the experience, 
one Ranjen Koral, was addressed by the Wraith. It told Koral that he would find it, and where he goes, the reckoning follows. Eventually, Koral began to work on the dig site at Bahala, where he discovered an inscription to the Emissary that indeed began the day of reckoning between the Prophets and the Kostomogen. The Power Wraiths were fallen Prophets, exiled from the Celestial Temple that took on the forms of fire. For the longest time, they were sealed on Bajor in the Fire Caves and a myriad of other artefacts that bound them. Much like the Prophets, the Power Wraiths are difficult to study, perhaps more so, as they often exhibit hostile intent. What can be witnessed, however, is that they can possess the bodies of individuals, overtaking their will or acting in cohort with it, as seen in the forceful possession of Jake Sisko at the hands of the Costumogen in 2374, and the willing host provided by Gul Dukat. This seems like a potentially evil action, but the Prophets too could forcefully inhabit an individual, such as Sarah Sisko or Kieran Arise. In fact, the Prophet that overtook Sarah Sisko did so to ensure the birth of Benjamin Sisko, who went on to discover the wormhole, and played a part in ultimately severing the Par Wraith's ties to the Celestial Temple. Such plans were set in motion from beings that existed outside of time, be they Prophets or wormhole aliens, and tales such as this serve to strengthen the Bajoran faith in their gods. And who's to say they're wrong? Thanks for listening to this lore episode of my Star Trek Online story series. The next instalment will be back to the more regular format as we tackle the next set of missions centred around the Borg and Species 8472. But Bajor and the Cardassians have had a lot of backstory that is relevant to their cultures, though the Cardassian struggle arc has ultimately been reduced by several rewrites and the Lost Dominion arc will be available later on but yes, I will be tackling that too. So, until the next part, I've been Rick, and I hope you join me next time as we continue to explore the ever-growing narrative of Star Trek Online through the crew of the USS Armager. Until then, thanks again, and goodbye.